How you guys doing? This is Real Sun COG. Today we're here with Aaron Wolf. How you doing, brother? Yo, yo, what's up? Doing good. Thank Thanks. you so much for coming out tonight. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Before we get started, I just want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Puff Sauce, Boundless Tech, and Red Feathers Farms, keeping us all elevated. Much love. Shout out. Thank you so much for coming down. How are you? Doing so good. Thank you. Beautiful day today. Thanks yes, for having me. Yes, it is. Me. Amazing. Beautiful. Um, how'd you get your start in music? Um, so, good question. I've been <laughs> playing music a long time. <clears throat> um, really just started taking it full time like the last two years or so. Um, I had a background in business, so I ran like sales teams. And whenever the company I was with, I did door to door sales for like mm -hmm. 10 years. That's crazy. And I had a whole bunch of people underneath me, and a company that I was with had sold. Mm -hmm. And so rather than going, starting back at square one and doing that whole thing, <clears throat> um, I decided just to take my chances doing music full time. So Definitely. Luckily, I had ended up in San Diego, where, as you guys know, it's like... The reggae. The yeah, a lot of shit definitely. going on there. <laughs> um, but as far as when I started was, I started playing guitar at, like, 12 years old. And then awesome. I had a whole background of doing hip-hop music and stuff that I never ended up putting out. But um, just mainly the last, like, two years, I've been doing it full-time. Just always following, you know, your passion, and it brings, like, light, and it's amazing how everything comes together, you know? Yes, definitely, um, definitely. When did you first realize you wanted to take it, you know, seriously? It was really after that had happened with, um, I spent so much time building something that wasn't my own mm -hmm. and it was great. I was making like awesome money and all the things that I thought that I wanted had started happening. Um, but I never was really fulfilled and doing music was always just out of reach. So I'd make some money and invest it into music and then go back to working and doing sales again to try and get more money to do more music. Mm -hmm. Um, and so whenever that happened, it was kind of like a divine storm that allowed me to kind of be forced to just do music Definitely. Um, and what I've found since then is that I'm attracting people who want to who fuck with me because of who I am and what I stand for as opposed to trying to just make money off of exactly. me paying them you know you that's know? awesome and your music really brings like people and it's really awesome the message that you always like keep portraying you know thank you appreciate that so what kind of things do you like to do to get inspired to write music man if, if you don't know by now probably but I love I love meditation um, there's a lot of, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of chaos that goes on just with social media and everything, um, with technology, we're all inundated with that. Yeah. So when I'm on my game and I'm doing what I know I should be doing, it, like I wake up, I'll run, I'll go over and meditate, I'll get clear. Um, and then generally speaking, it's like meeting people like you guys and traveling and things like that, um, also really inspires me to write. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Um, what was the process behind creating your album, The Greater Than Self? Sorry, Greater Than Self. Great question. So <laughs> um, it all kind of goes back to where I was doing, uh, I was really chasing after money for so many years. And it was kind of self-seeking, yeah. trying to make money so that way I could accomplish X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I really shifted to writing songs about... Uh, subject matter that would inspire others to live better. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be an example. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I did take that is really valuable from sales is leading from the front. So if I can be an example for people to live for something greater than just their own self-preservation, um, then hopefully that can cause some sort of ripple effect. So that was kind of the, the main inspiration behind it was just wanting to be that example myself. And it also serves as a reminder for me Whenever I do wake up in a mode of scarcity or in not such a loving, meditative mood. Because, you know, we all have, yeah. like, the ups and downs. Exactly. Um, so it, it kind of um, double-headed monster there. Yeah. I wanted to be the example and also to serve as, like, a reminder to myself. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Thank you. Always got to have the hard times, you know, but always keep it a good outlet, you know, and a there's always a great like light in the end of a tunnel. <laughs> yes, it's all about the contrast exactly. for sure. Exactly. Yes. Do you want to elaborate a little bit? Um, you partnered up with Child Hung Hunger Sucks. Yeah, that was really cool. So there's this amazing girl named Ever Matson. She was, I think, 11 at the time when we partnered. Um, we ended up doing our CD, re my single release, sorry, my CD release um, at the House of Blues. That's awesome. We partnered with her. We ended up having... Um, there's a company called Nanocraft CBD. They sponsored some um, buses. Mm -hmm. So we took party buses. We wanted to give the kids that are, 
I didn't realize, but there's so many homeless kids in San Diego yeah. um, that we wanted to give them an experience of going to a concert because music really has always been a big um, motivator for me. Exactly. So we ended up um, linking up with Ever. She's really amazing. She's like raised so much money selling lollipops. Um, yeah, I saw that. That's awesome. Super, amazing. super cool. But we ended up going and picking up a bunch of kids at the park downtown. Um, House of Blues was really cool about it. They gave us mm-hmm. somewhat of a deal because we did it during their dark hours. And we bussed them back to the House of Blues. They mm-hmm. all got to go in. It was a back-to-school event. That's so awesome. we had some other sponsors that provided, like, backpacks and school supplies. Yeah. And they had, like, chicken and waffles because that's, <laughs> like, the House of Blues thing. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but it was really cool just to see that it wasn't just me wanting to do that, but there were other companies out there exactly. yeah, that really care about that. And mm-hmm. Ever and her dad are, like such a good example so that it was just kind of made it's sense amazing. it was a good fit it's amazing what they're doing and helping others you know and you guys like gave that outlet to them and there's it's always a brighter there's always like good things you know out there so we just got to keep you know pushing um and fighting on basically definitely, definitely how does it um how does giving back help you influence you as a musician um really it's all it it's kind of like if you give it helps you as much as it helps the people that you're giving to and, you know, I've been through some, just like everybody, we've all kind of been through some shit. And the things that impacted me the most and where I saw, like, God show up the most in my life is in those hard times mm-hmm. of people coming and doing something they didn't necessarily have to do mm-hmm. by giving and being loving toward me. And so th- those types of things have stuck with me to where I wanted to make that same impact with someone else. And that's even, like, with my music, I've had certain certain music in my life that has really like taken me out of some severely bad times and so all in all I just kind of want to keep paying that forward you know exactly good question so how do you say you balance your daily life with your music life man before it was a matter of I'd go and work like I was saying and then I'd go and do music and then go work and then do music um but about two two and a half years ago when I made the full commitment to just doing music um I had to go through like a real dark time of uncertainty where I went from making like over 100 G's a year, being really focused on material things and material success um, to where I went to like literally making like $200 in a month, then 400, then so slowly working your way. Yeah. So now my whole life is based around music. Um, So it's more or less balancing like my healthy habits with my work of music so instead of spending all day trying to book shows and do that type of shit i try to like i said get in my routine of meditation eating healthy exercise clear yeah so it's so it's since i am full-time music it's more just balancing my the habits that i know will keep me um in a good state of mind consistently yeah um so yeah that's pretty much it that's awesome um which artists have inspired you to start creating music Man, to start creating music, it's been everything from like Tupac to um, more recently, um, man. So like Tupac, and then I was in like Atmosphere for a long time, and then um, recently I listened to like obviously Stick Figure, and we were just listening to Catastro on the way up here. But I I like all music um, rather than like saying that one band really inspires me i tend to get obsessed with songs yeah so i'll like hear one song and then i'll play that shit until like my ears bleed (laughs) and then i'll go to another one um but yeah everyone in the reggae scene right now is super inspiring to me like the whole cali roots yeah reggae scene the reggae rise up um all those bands are really inspiring but my roots go back as far as like like i said like atmosphere and tupac and just it's really a wide, classics. yeah, wide range for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, wide range. <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. Are there any um, artists you want to collaborate with but haven't had the chance to? You know, that's a good question. Um, I recently uh, worked with Ian Young, so I have a single coming yeah, out with him. Ian Young. Right, well, he produced it. It comes out on um, April third, mm-hmm. so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but Check with, it out. yeah, definitely check <laughs> it out. Check it out. Hey. That song's called The Highest, so April 3rd that drops. Um, but really, I, I'm right now I'm focused on just working on me. I feel like I have so much more to put out. Um, exactly. But like Always I said. Perfecting the craft, you know? Yeah, anyone in that scene, if they wanted to um, collaborate, I would be open to it. 
yeah, but I'm definitely. really just, I'm focusing on me right now, mostly. Oh, yeah. That's how you got to do it, you know, keep grinding, honestly. Um, you recently just put out your new single, Better Way. Do you want to elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, great question. Um, so it really speaks to just getting fed up doing something that you're tired of doing. Um, I feel like the questions in which we ask ourselves determine the quality of our life. And our internal dialogue, a lot of the time, are just questions just running, right, all the time. And so I believe that music has a big effect on our subconscious. And our subconscious is what attracts and repels things from us. So any of my songs, I really want them to be intentional as far as what the message is because my shit tends to get caught in my head a lot. Mm -hmm. And so um, Better Way is just about getting to that point where you're just, like, fed up. You know you can't keep doing it the same way. And I was literally in that situation as I was writing the song. I thought there's got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) that brought me to what is the better way? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it kind of starts you down that path of changing things for the better. Definitely. Always got to keep a positive mindset, you know, and you could always keep doing better, you know? Yes, yes. Love it. So can we expect any new music other than the one with Ian Young on April yeah. 4th? Yeah, man. So we have, um, it comes out April 3rd. We have um, The Highest coming out. And then I'm working with my boy Andreas. Um, we I have like four to five songs done where he's just finishing production on them. And then I'll probably be releasing, I hope to release like 10 songs total this year and into the first quarter of next year. That'd be awesome. So... I just plan on keeping it consistent. Keep it yeah, and that's and I think that's where at at that point I think I'll be able to look to who I want to collaborate with and stuff. Um, but super excited about the song with Ian that's coming out. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I'm really excited to hear that one. Thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, how would you describe your music to someone who's never heard it before? Like acoustic folk reggae um, artists that actually, you know what? I would like to do a song with Trevor Hall or Nako. Those two dudes are really dope. Or actually, Michael Franti's really, really dope, too. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I I explain it with those kind of, like, th- those genres, that mix. But it's got, like, a hip-hop feel to it as well. Yeah. Um, so those are the artists that I find people who l- who are really into them really resonate with my music. Also, Soja is another Soja, one. Soja, yeah. yeah. I was saying your voice kind of sounds like Soja a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Soja's awesome. dope. Um, what has been the hardest thing you've had to accomplish in the reggae industry? Great question. <laughs> um, I think it just applies to just life in general, and it's really just getting momentum and getting the ball rolling. Definitely. I think that um, in music especially, there's there's not really like a path to follow. Mm-hmm. And so that was one of the reasons that I actually started. I have an online music conference that I hold every That's year. Awesome. It's called the Musician Mastery Summit. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> plug that real quick um but anyway i just i wanted the way to reach out to people who are more established mm-hmm. in the scene than i am and to be able to give and so my business partner jamie she's also my girl she's the best um she does a lot of marketing and stuff and so the thing that i had to offer people above me was i could run ads mm-hmm. to um interviews and so i created this thing called the musician mastery summit where i interviewed like over the two years it was like 50 plus interviews that's crazy that's awesome that's why i really admire what you guys are doing i was like all right i feel it um but it's really just like knowing what path you want to take and it really it's customizable to each individual artist you know so outside of mm -hmm. so aside from just getting i think like accepted by the reggae community because my music's not like roots reggae um it's just in general having a path to follow and what i've learned is that no one really knows better for me than me. Exactly. Um, and so I just try and keep really smart people around me, mm-hmm. like Nick and Jamie and all my <laughs> team here. Um, yes. So that way I can use my own guidance and my own mm-hmm. judgment, but still just have really smart people who really know me well. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I think it's just that there's not really a path laid out. So you kind of just have to start mm-hmm. moving forward and then the path kind of exposes itself exactly. to you along the way. Oh. It'll all unfold, you know, yep. if you have the right people around yep. you and just always a positive mindset. It's Love that amazing. question, though, for sure. So what kind of advice would you give to someone trying to do what you're doing right now? Man, just go for it because there's a lot of time that can be wasted just hesitating. Um, and if you don't know really, like, how it's going to happen, that means you're probably on the right track. Yep. 
So I would just say start putting things out and it's never going to be like perfect to where you want it to be. Um, so you just start putting shit out and then you'll start finding that the world becomes like a kind of like a sounding board. Yep. It starts, yeah, it starts telling you, hey, we like, especially with the internet, it's like people tell you that they like that. You're like, oh, damn, all right, let's do more of that. <laughs> direct you know? feedback right there. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm not saying that I do like to do anything because of people's response, but no. you can really gain a lot yeah. getting outside of your own perspective. And the internet's like exactly okay. perfect for that. Perfect way to do that. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So how has music changed your life overall? Um, it's really taken me from doing something that wasn't fulfilling. Like I had really reached a level of a, like what I thought and what we're kind of like taught to reach. Like yeah. you make a lot of money, you buy a lot of things, you know what I mean? You do, you have success in business and music has taught me that there's not any one road that is right for people yep. and that your whole perspective on like even the people that used to be in my life as simple as like posting online when we post online as much as we might not acknowledge it like we have in our mind who might be viewing it yeah um and so music has just taught me that there's like a whole world of people out there who do have the same values as me as love and giving Yep. And these different things and that we don't necessarily have to live in a world where it's self-preservation and greed and taking. And obviously, you get your fair share of that within any business. Yeah. But, um, yeah, music's just taught me that you can follow your heart and the path will, I think, like, the world will kind of, like, meet you halfway yep. if you trust exactly. and start moving forward. You just got to follow the process. Yes. Just trust in the process. Yes. Hell yeah. Is there anyone you would like to shout out that's helped you throughout the whole musical process? Yeah, um, like I said, my girl, she's dope. Um, oh, yeah. She's like the mastermind behind a lot of the stuff. That's um, amazing. My drummer Nick, um, my bassist Brian, um, Andreas is my. He's one of my partners. Uh, he helps with a lot of my production. Um, awesome. Really, just anybody that has believed in me um, to kind of keep moving forward. Because each step that I take forward, I find things. Like I said, kind of come back to meet me. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. Give things and things will come in return, you know? Yes. That's awesome. Um, since we're real sensitive, you got to ask, what's your favorite strain? Favorite strain? Actually, <laughs> s- anything sativa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, anything sativa. But I'll smoke whatever. Um, I don't generally smoke a ton, but when I do, sativa. it's with real sensi. Hey. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's gonna be our commercials from now on. Yeah, I smoked. I smoked <laughs> a lot. Um, I just find that it's really good for me to take breaks. Um, sharpens me up, exactly. and it makes it more effective when I do go back to tolerance it. Tolerance breaks right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's with anything, right? I think yeah. me and Nick were talking about it on the way up here, just like having having balance. And I think any everybody has certain things that they like to indulge in. Yeah. And so I think it's just important to know yourself yeah. and know how to get the most out of that stuff. And for me, when I take a little break just makes me get really baked when I get back into it (laughs) and it accentuates the benefits of it. You know what I mean? Well, we really appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much. Yeah, much love. We had a great time. Make sure you guys go check out his new single coming out April 3rd. Yep, the highest. Ian Young, the highest. Coming out soon. Much love. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you.